Hi folks. Um, um, this video is to help explain um, the RAPS assignments um, for which you'll do four this semester. RAPS stands for Reflective Activities in Your Portfolio um, and you will find four sections of those throughout your text. Um, and I have um, assigned particular standards for particular times. So I've changed that up a bit this, this semester. Um, so you won't be choosing a wraps, wraps from across the standards. We're going to div divide them up into those four broad categories. So um, the first wraps that you're going to do will be on learner and the learning differences. And those are standards one, two, and three. And I've given you some choices there um, of, of, of uh, wraps that you can do from the first, second, third, and fourth sections in your text, and I've associated page numbers with those. And those wraps all focus on learner and learning differences. Um, the, the first one, getting to know whom, is the one I'm going to do a little model for you, um, and that involves an interview. Scoping school culture um, is observation um, in a school, and developmental and psychological stages of students uh, is also an observation in a school. Um, standard two, there are two choices, curriculum bias dictators, which asks you to analyze a textbook, and then observing different teaching strategies is another observation. And this particular observation can be done in your college classroom um, if it's difficult for you to get into a public school. Um, and it can be a private school too, it depends on the age group and what, what, that you'd like to teach. Um, and so, but, but for some people it's a little challenging to get into a uh, a classroom, and so you certainly can use a college classroom, um, even your own own classroom if you want to. And then standard three, there's only one choice, and that is what you see and what you get, which is also an observation that also can be in a college classroom. So I'm asking you to be very active in these uh, reflective activities. Uh, if you have questions about accomplishing any of those, let me know, but I think they're pretty clear. I'm going to walk you through the first one, getting to know whom, and give you a little bit of a model on how to do this. This particular wraps um, is about teaching your diverse students, um, and it asks me to partner with a classmate, a, com a campus colleague, or a friend, or someone new who comes from a background different than my own, and asks me to conduct an interview while being an active listener, and provides me with some questions that I could use. I can also have my own questions, but these, these are a good starting point. And some of these questions may not pertain to, to the person with whom I'm speaking, so I have to look through them and see which ones I want to use. And so, and then it asks me to, um, once I've done that, is to, to write that up in a narrative form. And then it asks me to reflect on that. So each wraps is set up with, here's the purpose, here's the activity, here's what you're going to produce, the artifact, here's how your reflection will, will look. And then I've added some, uh, another section to that as well. And so I created this template that you see on the screen in front of you. And I'd like you to use this template. Um, you can take out the instructions once you, get, once you get going, but you can just plug things in. I do want you at the very top here, put your name, of course, write down the standard. So I'm using standard one, which is learner development. All right. And then I'm, I need to look carefully at the standard to see what pieces of that standard I'm going to address. And in my um, video on unpacking the standards, I pointed out to you that in your pre-service teacher work, most generally you will be working with the um, critical dispositions and essential knowledge uh, because you're not actually performing. But if you're observing a teacher in a classroom, you certainly can um, indicate those performance indicators that you observed in that teacher. Okay, if you wanted to do that, but I also want to make sure that you're uh, you're addressing how you are uh, um, understanding the standard, and that's really where the critical position, uh, dispositions and essential knowledge comes in. So for this one, um, I read through the activity and I, I completed my my interview, and I decided that um, for what I did, these two pieces are the most um, most pertinent or uh, most directly related. Um, this one is essential knowledge. The teacher identifies readiness for learning and understands how development in any one area may affect performance in others. And also this critical disposition. The teacher respects learners' differing strengths and needs and is committed to using this information to further each learner's development. So eventually I'm going to explain how I, why I picked those, but for now I'm just going to put them there in this area where it's asking you to list them. And then explain what you did. Um, and I put up here that I did one one, getting to know whom. So name the activity you're doing. 
so that when we're reading these, we, we can easily get to them in the book without having to guess which one you're doing. So put the put the this all this that you get from the book right there. And then I wrote, I interviewed a colleague who is a native French speaker in order to better understand how linguistic difference may have affected his educational experience. All right. And then what did you produce? This is where I will put the narrative summary of my interview. I did not write it out, um, but this is where I would put it. Okay. Um, I, I'm not just going to put a bulleted list of, of um, I'm, I'm sorry, bulleted list of, of, of things in here. I'm going to put it into a, into a summary. The same thing for the reflection. You know, what did I learn? What questions remain? I'm going to look at the questions in the reflection section and answer those. So this is where I write uh, the answers to those reflective questions and then some of my own ideas. And uh, this will be a narrative too, will not be a bulleted list. In other words, I won't just write the question and the answer. I'm going to synthesize it into a, a narrative. And then this is a piece that I have added. This is your metacognitive piece. This is where you look carefully at what you did and how the how what you did demonstrates your understanding of, of what you chose um, to um, for the standards. So, th for example, I might write for 1F, the teacher identifies readiness for learning and understands how development in any one area might affect performance of others. And do do pull that back down in here. You can just cut and paste from up above. Go back up here and just cut and paste what you had and put it down, excuse me, put it down here and then right under that. In my interview, I discovered that because my friend did not speak fluent English, he was often lost in content area courses like history. When he could read about it in French, he understood that the class was mostly verbal and he felt lost most of the time. Therefore, he did not, did not do so well in history class, not because he couldn't learn, but because he could not ex access the content orally. Then I also want to add to that my own ideas about this. Okay, So when, um, when I become a classroom teacher, I need to be mindful of the language um, diversity and the extent to which a student can access um, verbal instruction. Um, if that, if there is a significant gap, I will need to make sure I provide other ways to access the learning, such as um, materials in the heritage language, um, tutors to assist in acquiring um, English, um, perhaps some um, um, lower leveled reading in English, and so forth. Okay. So I'm going to reflect about that a little bit. So I'm going to explain what I learned and what this means for me as a, as a beginning teacher. All right, let me go over this one more time. You're going to use the template. You're going to put the standard number, the standard name. You're going to choose performance indicators and or critical dispositions and or essential knowledge. Um, choose, choose wisely. Don't, don't try to put a whole bunch in there. Um, two or three are good. Um, explain the activity by um, naming it and then describing it. Um, put whatever the artifact is that they're asking you to, to produce here and then do your reflection here and then explain um, how this activity met the um, pieces of the standard you chose. And once you finish that you can certainly go through here you know and you can get rid of some of this stuff like you can get rid of this you can get rid of this. You know I'd leave the titles there because that really helps us we probably don't need all of this um, so we can, you know, so you can kind of clean this up a little bit. Um, get rid of that, and get rid of that, and so it's a little cleaner now. All right, and um, I had put my stuff in bold, but you don't have to do that. You certainly don't. You can do whatever you want. I just that was easy for me to differentiate between the headings um, and my writing, or you could reverse it. You know, you could put this and make this bold. That might even be a better idea and it will stand out to the reader. So that's that's it. Using the template, following the instructions. I walked you through the getting to know whom one um, and then there are one, two, three, four, five, six to choose from um, in the first uh, section 
and then there are four to choose from for wraps two. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for wraps three, and then wraps four, there's uh, four, there's six, okay? So in wraps two, you're going to be addressing content knowledge, which are standards four and five. For wraps three, instructional practices, standards six, seven, or eight. And wraps four, professional responsibilities, standards nine and ten. Okay, so if you have any questions, please let me know.